unfortunately, a lot of times we don't know what we're doing when we're buying it, storing it, or really drinking it to get the most out of it. So Linda Stutz with Arcavino and Maple Creek Winery is going to educate us a little bit so it can be more of an experience and less of a drunken binge. <laughs> so, Linda, um, first of all, how many glasses do you get from an average bottle of wine? Okay, well, an average glass would... Would there be about five glasses in a 750 milliliter bottle of wine. So what's the other thing you should really think about when you're going in to buy wine? Well, I think you need to figure out how much money you want to spend, what your budget is, what you're um, willing to spend, how many bottles you're going to buy, mm -hmm. and um, what you're going to be serving for dinner. Okay, so you want to think about how many guests you're having, yeah. know that you're going to get five glasses per bottle, and then that determines the number of bottles basically you have to get. Um, you also need to consider what your menu is, I'm guessing. Absolutely. You want to think about what you're serving. Uh, you want to try to pair your wines. Wine's actually a food product, and really can bring out some wonderful flavors in the food, very, very much complement the food. So that certainly is is something to consider. Now, um, should it be a hard fast rule? Like what if I, I know that reds go with beef, but right. maybe I'm not a red person. Fan. Yeah. <laughs> well, really what matters is that you enjoy the wine. And okay. so what, what do you like? But if you really are concentrating on pairing wines with foods, then um, sort of the rule of thumb would be your white wines go with the poultries and the fishes and your red wines go with the, the meats and the red, red meats. And is anything else that one should really consider when they're shopping for wine? Well, I think you really need to consider how much money you want to spend. So okay. let's say you're going into a grocery store and you have a whole wall of wines you need mm -hmm. to choose from. And so first you have to kind of decide in your mind how much money you want to spend per bottle. Mm -hmm. um, if you're you having a big barbecue with a lot of people, you may want to, you know, spend a little less mm -hmm. per bottle. Or if you're having a private, intimate dinner party, you may want to splurge a little bit on a little more premium bottle. Now, is there a price point at which once you buy something cheaper than that, it's really probably not going to taste all that great? <laughs> or <laughs> well, is that just more of a matter of brands? I mean, you know, you can't really tell. Well. I think you can certainly tell if you're uh, if you're you're into wine and you understand wine, you can definitely tell the difference between a well-crafted mm -hmm. wine or a high-production wine. Gotcha. You know, same with food. You can go and buy a fast food burger, or you can go to a fine dining restaurant and have Kobe beef. You know, right. so okay. so there definitely is a difference in the quality, okay. and it just really depends on you as a consumer. What do you want to serve to your guests and what do you enjoy? Now what do you find um, when you see people shopping wine? What else do you, do you see? Well they look at the labels, them? how pretty are they, uh, maybe they have a catchy name, you mm -hmm. know maybe you're a surfer and it has a surfboard on it or a cowboy and it has a cowboy on it or something that catches you mm -hmm. in that uh, realm. So also you kind of decide where it's from. Is it, do you want a California wine? Do you want an Argentinian wine? Do you want a Australian wine? So those are things you keep in mind. And, and if you want a sweet wine, you would check the bottle to see if it has any residual sugar content in it and that would identify uh, the, the sugar, the sweetness of the wine. Now, okay, because I like sweet wines and I had no idea that there was anything on the bottle that told me. They do, it's required uh, in the TTB, the, Treasury and Tax Bureau that regulates the wine labeling industry requires that if you make a sweet wine, you need to list the residual sugar or how So how much will sugar. it say residual sugar? RS. Oftentimes you'll see the initials RS, RS. which okay. stand for residual sugar, and it'll have a percentage like 2.3% or 1.5% or 7.9% okay. on this bottle. We have a 7.5% residual okay, sugar so on a, a sweet, sweet late harvest okay. dessert wine. All right, cool. Um, I, I guess I guess that's really uh, all that I need to consider when yeah. I go in to buy wine. The biggest thing probably for most folks is price. Price and identifying what you're serving. You might want to have one type of wine with your cheese and appetizers and another wine with your first course and another wine with your second course and a, and a dessert wine. Okay, one last question. Last question. 
Okay, you know how you're not supposed to mix like beer and liquor, okay, which I do yeah. anyway. Uh, but uh, uh, so, so, is there a thing with wine that you shouldn't like drink a red and a white in the same night and get a, get a huge headache? No. And what do you do about headaches, by the way? Well, you know, vitamin B is a really good thing to pump for headaches, or lots of water, or try not to overdrink, or uh, you know, yeah. some people have different sensitivities. So whether it's your, you're allergic to the histamines in the wine, and if that's the case, a nice Benadryl will help sort of clean up your sinuses. Or um, if you indulged, overindulged, I'd say a lot of water, a lot of vitamin B, and okay. maybe an Advil. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, Linda. I you're uh, feel, especially knowing knowing that thing about sweet wines, that helps me out a lot. Great. So regardless of the type of wine that you like, don't be scared to give it a try.